action. Good morning, Mrs. Mountjoy. Oh, Mr. Bradbury. Oh, Mr. Bradbury. I'm not one to tittle tattle, as you will know. Mrs. Bradbury, it's a bit early for me running around like this, isn't it? It's, it's barely 8.30. Mr. Bradbury! It's, it's Constable Evans. He's... Oh, he's... He, he, he's... Oh. Dead, Miss Mountjoy? I, are you sure? Oh, quite, quite sure, Mr. Blake. I went, I went, I went to the, the police station last night just, just to remind her of tonight's community meeting and, and there he was, sitting on the toilet, quite, quite dead. Very strange. I was only talking to him yesterday afternoon to see if we could sort out the lock for the vestry door. Oh! And there he was, holding a banana. A banana? Oh yes, Mr Barnes, and... Quite a ripe one at that. He'd peeled it and, if I remember correctly, he'd taken one bite. D do you think it was passed at sell by date? Oh, I mean, I don't know about that, but judging by the look on his face, it was something that was slow and painful and abdominal. Oh. You do realise I'm in the middle of something? Mountjoy, look. The point six sixes do not come before the point seven sevens. What is wrong with people? They really are dreadful. John Evans is dead, Esther. Shh. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm very sorry to hear this news. He was a pillar of the community. Belle Island's only representative of Britain's fine force of police officers. And he owed me £2.80 in fines. Here, get that down, yeah. Thanks, love. Although it is a bit early. I mean, I had one last night before I went to bed. I'm amazed you got any sleep after that shock. Oh, I did drop off eventually. So, you say that he was wearing an Elvis t-shirt. It's funny, John never struck me as being an Elvis fan. Me neither. Although, I mean, he did always keep a tub of real cream in the office. <laughs> Miss Barnes wants a committee meeting for tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. She does, Mrs Maloney, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm awfully sorry for the short notice. It's not your fault. I understand why the committee need a meeting. Oh, it's absolutely dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. I could probably organise Connie for about 11 o'clock. She won't be doing very much. She'll be very upset. I know how close they are. Were. So, so we're good for 11 then? Yes. And you can tell that tight-fisted old bitch of a librarian that she'd better well put on some blooming decent refreshments. Um, OK.
would have been nice, Connie dear. You don't want to be here, do you? Oh, no, it's just the shock. Mr Evans won't be in for his slice of sponge cake and pot of tea anymore. You can work in the kitchen today if you li like. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. uh, Do you think Miss Barnes will be at this meeting? Well, considering she's done the arrangements and she's on the committee, it's highly likely. Oh. She intimidates you, doesn't she? Oh, no, it's not that. It's just she makes me feel smaller than her. Sure. You just get in the kitchen and get that tear and find out. There's a good girl. Oh, hello, Mrs Maloney. Good morning. Hi, Eddie. Are uh, you calling those muffins? Oh, yes. Thanks, Claire. Morning. 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 All right. Morning. Oh. Oh, thank you, Dad. Nice cup of char. Ah, oh, lovely. There, there we go, are, Tom. Lad. Thank you. Should be ladies first, but there we go. Thanks, no ladies here. <laughs> well, we better get this meeting started. Where's Esther? Surely we need her to take some minutes. Yes, it's, it's not like her to be late. No, but don't forget, she has been quite poorly. I mean, she's only just got back to the choir. She certainly is. Maybe that's why she's not at the meeting. It'd be just like her not to be able to find the key or know when to come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has always been like that, yeah. My apologies for being two minutes late. I was detained by Mr Pritchard. He was finally returning his books on pipe lagging. I had to fill out the paperwork, but it's fine. Maybe is ever, Esther. I do have a busy library to run, Thomas. Unlike you, I'm not just going through the motions at my workplace until I take my retirement. Well. I think that's what poor John Evans was doing. So what's this about him being on the bog holding a banana? Was it some sort of fetish? Or was he just going through the motions? <laughs> Mr Blake! Eddie, that was in such poor taste. I still can't get the image out of my head. Oh, just, just sitting there, holding his banana. I bet you can't. Please remember your position as Vicar of Belle Island, Mr Blake. Think of me as landlord of the Bellevue at the moment, Pete. I always found Constable Evans to be a charming man, although he was a bit of an outsider. Yes, he was always very supportive to me whenever the local press wanted to do an interview or I needed to open a local fate. Oh, to be sat with such a local celebrity. How are you feeling now, love? Well, it's just a bit of a shock, Mrs Maloney. I know how fond you were of Mr Evans. I also know for a, for a fact how touched he was by how much you cared for him. All those travel brooches you kept bringing into the station for him. Oh, he was always so busy. He never did get a chance to go on holiday and he no. so deserved it. He never did get a chance to leave. No, but this were his home, love. People often don't like going outside their comfort zones. Come here, give me that. Let's get that out onto the table. I notice the Reeves girl isn't gracing us with her presence. Be typical of her to try to steal the limelight. Uh, so, uh, Esther, this, uh, this bug of yours, what was it? Trap wind? Or did you just have the squits? <laughs> 
You really can be the most vulgar of men, Mr. Blake. You really should get it checked out, you know, Esther. Stomach bugs don't last a fortnight. Thank you, Dr. Kildare. Such a caring bedside manner. Is that the side of your character you, you shared with that young floozy of a teaching assistant? Can we all please just continue with the meeting with the main topic here, which is, of course, the opening of the Wildlife Centre? Oh, just trying to show compassion to my ex. Yeah, but, but while we're on the subject, has anyone confirmed cause of death yet? For who? For who? Blimey, how many deaths has there been in the last 24 hours? Constable Evans, of course. Well, how would I know? Didn't you ask? Didn't you go into the hospital with him? Um, he was already dead. It was a bit late for that. But what did the paramedics say? Mrs Mountjoy, please reassure us that you did contact the emergency services about John. Well, no, I mean, I... I, I, was, I was so shocked and I had to go up and have a drink to steady my nerves and then I had to tell you lot. Bloody hell, he's still stiff on the can. Did it ever enter your tiny brain to contact the hospital to take the body away? I'm so sorry. <sighs> yeah, emergency services. Uh, get an ambulance, please. Yeah, and can I book in an appointment for a brain scan, please? You haven't got your sea alerts, Dan. I'm a mainland detective. I didn't sign up for these island investigations. Why can't they build a bloody bridge like normal people? Well, to tell you the truth, I can't remember a time when this island needed any backup. Evans always kept things in check. Although, then again, they cut up a tree or a broken window in the church parish room. It's probably the biggest incident he's ever had to deal with. Well, I just need five minutes to have some fresh air. And then where do you want to start? Forensics. Isn't this a sudden death incident? We're just ticking boxes, aren't we? But it turns out, hospital reckon that there was something a little odd about the body. What? More odd than being dressed as Elvis Presley, eating a banana on the toilet? Well, apparently, he sat in that position when he died. Meeting started at 1100 hours. Apologies from Eddie Blake, who is attending a christening, and apologies from me for, well, y you know. What it's all forgotten, Ginny. Just drop it. Yes, the poor man has finally received some kind of dignity. He's in the chapel of rest, rather than squatting on his toilet. OK, Esther, that's enough. I feel there's m bigger issues at stake now. Agreed. The Wildlife Centre opens tonight, and with the passing of Constable Evans, we have got nobody to cut the ribbon. I do, of course, have rather a bit of experience of this myself. You're already doing a speech and doing the press interviews. It'll become the Peter Bradbury show if you were to undertake the ribbon cutting as well. That was just an idea. I, I have an idea. Oh, then it must be very cold and lonely wandering around in that vacuous skull of yours. Esther, what's your idea, Connie, love? Well, it's just that man over there. That's Kenneth Kerville. You know, the author who's got all his books in the local library. Ahem. Uh, many of which are yet to be returned. Indeed, Mr. Cavall's books have a tendency to go missing, come to think of it. Yeah, but, but he's a celebrity and he's really well known. Wow, what a double prize. Goody, that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> Allow me to uh, invite him over. This is a situation that requires tact and, and patience and, and manners. Falling insect. Mr. 
is Mr. Kerbal, uh, Kenneth. Kenny, just, I'm, I'm guessing. Just to my friends, so stick the Kenneth, please. <coughs> oh, why, it's Mr. Bradbury, the uh, camera hogging parish councillor from Bell Island. <laughs> what a pleasure. Go on, I'm, I'm, I'm such a big fan of yours, and, and we were just talking over there about how popular your novels are the, the science fantasy? The crime novels, actually. Nine crawls. <laughs> uh, crime novels, of course. Oh! <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mr. Carroll. Are you on the island for long? I have a holiday home here. I've just come back to work on my new book. Another murder mystery? Uh, not this time. I'm trying to break away from the typecasting. This is going to be a book about people living within a, a small island community. Oh, Bell Island is a small island. And we've got a community. Oh. I think. Get this gentleman another drink immediately. Mr. Caval, you possibly remember me. I run the local library, Esther Barnes. My dear lady, of course, and may I thank you for your loyalty in uh, giving a whole shelf to my works as a local writer. My pleasure, of course, Mr. Caval. We are the Bellevue Committee and I am the secretary. Tonight we are staging the official opening of our new wildlife centre. Poor Constable Evans was to be our guest of honour, recently deceased. Yes, I know. Poor man. Uh, Mark Cummings of the Chronicle told me. Well, Mr Evans was to have cut the ribbon and said a few words, a task which is now sadly beyond him. Mm. We were wondering, would you be so kind as to do us the honour? Opening up the new centre, or certainly, but I, I do have a condition of my own. Ooh, name it. Anything. Well, as you may know, uh, I write a weekly uh, column for the Chronicle. Uh, I'll cut your tape if you will allow me to take some photos and sound bites from your centre. As long as that doesn't interfere with the press stuff you've organised. Well, sure thing, Kenny. I mean, the more paparazzi, the better. And well, I better go and get my suits organised, excuse me. Great, happy to be Oh, Kenny, thank you so much. You were just wonderful. The Wildlife Centre, it's a uh, tad more compact than I expected, but I'm sure it has great potential. Oh, it does, it does. And I do apologise for Mr Bradbury. He does have a wonderful knack of just jumping and stealing the limelight on every photo. You're telling me you you find it difficult to find one he hasn't already photobombed in there. Look at those. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. <coughs> oh, while you've got it out, mm. could we have a group one? Yeah. Well, yes, OK. Yeah, take photo. Are you going here? Oh, well, just... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. My name's Detective Sue Stone and this is my colleague, Detective Keith McMahon. Detectives? That's a bit drastic, isn't it? Uh, we were just going to pop over the pub in a minute. Do you want to join us? We are very much on duty, sir. But we would like to take this opportunity to ask you some questions about the death of John Evans. Um, it's, it's just Ginny you need to talk to. She, she found him alone. None of us were there. It's not as simple as that, sir. Following the findings from our forensics team, it turns out that Mr. Evans did not die of natural causes. <gasps> he was found in a different location to where he was poisoned. The body was moved. <gasps> Which means that we are now under investigation of what seems to be a murder. <gasps> 